I am here, and I have Kareem Mayfield on the line. Hard oh, hitter, what's up? What it do? What it do? For uh, Spence, I was going to fight Spence like the uh, next day notice, and which was his last fight. And you know, when he got blood tested and everything, but they chose not to go with Mayfield. But um, you know, nevertheless, you know, the, things were thrown out there as if you know we you know want to look after them, but. I mean, like I said, it's only talk until it's official, oh you know. Oh my and, God. Um, hey, and to be honest, you know, I do feel like that. I do deserve <laughs> one of those situations. Throw me on the PBC. Hey, I don't mind coming in as a as a B guy, so to speak. That's what they say. You're an A guy or a B guy. Obviously, I would be a B guy because I'm not a Brona or I'm not a um, Sean Porter. But with that being said, you know, um, I think I do deserve to be on something, and I haven't heard anything specific at this moment. You just said. You were there, and I knew it because I seen you and I asked you. I'm like, what you doing? You told me about the Earl Spence thing, and they went with Phil Greco, and not you. But Earl Spence has been, he's been getting this, this, this facade as if he's a killer because Mayweather christened him. But so what happened with you? I mean, why didn't he fight you? It was a trip because you had, you actually called me the same day of, and I thought you had called lights or something like that, and. And I'm like, God, I was wondering, how did you know this? Because they told me don't mention it, you know, because um, so I, I didn't mention it at the time. But I had spoke to you, and I just told you to keep it off the record. And I was just like, well, actually, he was like, I'm like, actually, they just offered me something for tomorrow. And he was like, oh, what, blah, blah, blah. But anyhow, I don't know why they didn't. I do know why. Uh, they, actually, I, I can't say I don't know why. I I, I don't want to say be out here like, well, he, he was scared, and he was the Ducking because I mean I don't feel that fighters are actually scared to fight nobody. They may be a little less hesitant to fight, but I don't know. I feel that maybe the team overall feels that I wouldn't be. Uh, uh, I'm kind of um, not so um, uh, more of a threat, so to speak, or, or to the fighters or whatever. But I, I can't even put my finger on it. But they they call me in, but it's like what the hell? They don't they they don't think about it. To, that's why nowadays when they say would you fight, they will throw out a name, and I be like, let's do it. I'm like, but I tell the promoter, I say, listen, go get at his team first before y'all get my hopes up high. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I'm getting prepared. I go take blood tests and fly out and literally change everything that I'm doing to go fight these people. And then they end up pulling out. I'm like, go speak, see if they fight me first before y'all get at me, because now I'm getting <laughs> irritated with this shit, you know? Yeah, Kareem. But let me uh, see. This is what's tripping me out. First it was Porter, then it was Earl Spence, now it's Mayweather. Like, is your team, like, just really close with them? Uh, are you in constant contact with them? Like, are, are you putting your name in their mouths, like, somehow that we don't know of? Or, or, or are they just, do they just have Kareem Mayfield on the mind every time somebody drops out? Yeah, damn, that's the... <laughs> Then again, that's again, that's another good question you know, because there's thousands of fighters, you know, and to be honest, I felt like uh, because originally you know, I heard like, well, you know, with the Porter fight, they was like, well, you know, they, they, when, they when I got calls, it's like they, they feel that, that you'll be good for a, um, you know, you're, you're, you're a team, you'll be a fan, uh, excuse me, televised. It'll be televised and you'll be, uh, you can be Frank Finley if you know from the way you fight, the way you come in. And then I got, then I, someone was like, well, the networks uh, wasn't sure about you because you had, um, it was like just crazy excuses, you know what I mean? And people were like, well, they throw my losses. Well, he lost to DeLorme and he lost to Taylor. And I'm like, and first of all, these guys, I'm not I'm saying that these are some world champions, but they're definitely not no bums. And, and how I lost, it was not in no type of fashion as if I wasn't world class. I lost by some simple points, you know what I mean? And it wasn't like I got beat up, battled or bruised. So it's not like I'm one of these guys that don't deserve to be in there with these guys. And then, then again, if I wasn't, these seem to be the guys that those guys are fighting. <laughs> the yeah. guys that don't deserve to be in there with That's... them. So I'm still trying to figure it out myself right now. Maybe you guys can say some light on that. Yeah, that's funny that you say it like that because uh, that's how I took it exactly um, in that manner with these dudes that are getting the shots and and no and no hate on Luis Colazo, no hate on Phil Greco, no hate on uh, Eric no, Bone, no, no. no hate on any of those guys. It's just that I don't understand why they keep saying Kareem Mayfield and you've yet to make your PVC debut. But um, look, I, I, we have a lot of other. Um, uh, co-hosts that want to ask you questions about this. So I'm just going to ask you one last question before I pass you off. I want to know your reaction to Floyd Mayweather picking Andre Berto. Obviously, you're on social media. Obviously, you got your um, you know, ear to the street. You know what fans think. You know what the media thinks. Uh, but what do you think of uh, Floyd Mayweather choosing Andre Berto and the fact that it's going to be on Showtime pay-per-view? 
Um, I mean, overall, like I said, going back to what I said earlier, you know, of course I would have um, um, to have loved, and it would have been an honor to be able to be in a ring with Floyd Mayweather. But, um, I mean, now uh, he chose uh, Andre Berto, and a lot of people was kind of darn talking the fight. But, I mean, Andre Berto, he had you know, he, he does have three losses, but styles make fights. People are like, well, he lost to him, and he lost to him. That doesn't mean that it's not going to be a good fight, to be honest. You know, as a, as a fight, uh, fight fan, you know, um, and, and a fighter, I feel that it'll still be a good fight. You know, I, to be honest, I feel that I certainly would have made a, a way better fighter uh, fight for it. But I think it's still going to be a good fight. And, I mean, the odds are like crazy right now. You know what I mean? But, you know, shout out to Andre Berto. He's a good dude overall. You know, I have nothing bad to say against Andre Berto. And, um, I mean, I commend him on getting a fight. And him and Virgil Hunter, they may feel think they will come up with a good game plan to make an exciting fight. Now, Kareem, uh, with all due respect to uh, all the fighters out there, uh, we've seen some of the fighters that are signed to Al Heyman, and i got to tell you, I, I think you're just as good, if not better, than a lot of them. Are, are you surprised that Al Heyman hasn't approached you and, and, and you weren't asked to become an Al Heyman fighter, to be in his stable? Um, you know, I, I actually am surprised, you know, just uh, because, as you said, um, you know, um, you know, I am an exciting fighter, I, and you know, I have beat. Um, you know, people are like, well, have whoever you fighting. You know, to be honest, everyone knows that Mauricio Herrera is like he's 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 supposed to be the linear champion right now with the guys he's beat um, in the past uh, his past few fights, and with uh, which is Danny Garcia and Jose Benavidez. Everybody knows he won those two fights, and you know, he would be a linear champion, and you know, and I beat him fair square, and you know, just um, and. You know, me. With, with that being said, PBC has a lot of fights, and there's a lot of guys to fill those cards nowadays. It's not just like maybe seven guys. Now it's like a lot of guys. They want guys to fight those guys. So, with that being said, I don't know why. You know, I don't understand why I haven't actually been approached unless I'm being approached with the one day notice. It's like actually now it's like okay, now it's starting to feel a little kind of disrespectful to be honest. It's like okay. It was cool, you know, it was filming me, but I'm like, oh, come on, why are you guys going to keep throwing me in a one-day notice and then don't even get me to fight? And I'm like, why y'all keep dangling this dangling this piece of, you know what I mean, hey, just cheese in my face, and then, you know what I mean, it's kind of crazy, you know. But um, to be honest, I don't know. Hey, Al Heyman, I don't know if you're listening, man. What's happening? Why you, why you ain't picking me up? What's going on, man? <laughs> but, um, you know what? To be honest, hey, to, to be honest, um, you know, I'm not sure I've heard uh, uh, things, something like, well, you know, some things like, well, you know, he's not feeling your mentality. Or, so somebody actually told me that, well, the way that you came in on Danny Garcia um, some years back when you mobbed on him and, you know, you kind of came and was asking him for a shot in the Floyd Mayweather's uh, press conference um, 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 that, that uh, you know, Heyman and him didn't like that. I actually heard that. And that was the only thing that I could consider that might be true. Like, maybe they think we came in too thuggish and we were, like, you know, too goonish. And, and, and what, I got, what I got to say about that is, this how that how we came in was it it wasn't over rowdy it was a loud it was loud but in the situation I was that situation I was NABO champion number two in the world and the WBO number four in the WBA and I felt I wasn't getting no shot I didn't get no big shot they were kind of I was kind of like being hung and put on the shelf and I was just approaching him and we came in nobody threw no punches nothing was disrespectful my brother and Angel Garcia got into it but it was just a few words but this has happened so much in the past of boxing and that's what boxing is about rivalries like that and I don't if that's the reason then they need to rethink you know the way that they feel about me because you know everybody know I'm a cool dude and I mean shit I was feeling that way at that time you know now um are you still training with Virgil Hunter I know you you were before and then a, a couple fights you weren't what's the situation now with, with, with Virgil Hunter well um, you know Virgil Hunter he's uh you know he's he, he's a uh, He's he's like my OG, and you know what I mean in the game, and uh, he'll always I feel be an advisor in a way. Sometimes he you know he gives me advice about certain things, and I may go over there and spoil a lot of his world. He has a lot of world class fighters over there in the Bay over Bay Bay Area, which is just right across the bridge from me. So you know I always be you know around him, or should I say in his tutelage or, or hearing from him. Sometimes I'm sparring, he may say something, but overall my chief trainer is my original trainer Ben Batista, you know, and he's been there from the beginning and. Um, the reason why I wasn't actually with him, it was like him and Ben, him and ben was working hand in hand at one point. Then Ben ended up moving to Vegas, so that kind of, you know, that's what happened when you know I had changed uh, trainers at that point where I wasn't. I was specifically with uh, with Virgil, 
And at that time, Virgil was very busy and too busy. So it didn't really work out with him just being the chief trainer. But now, like I said, uh, going back to the question, Virgil, you know, has always been around, and he's a cool guy. And uh, But overall, uh, uh, Ben Batista is my chief trainer, and uh, he's been down from the beginning. I got one last one for you before I shoot you back to Ness. Now, you know, the last two fights were in between 140 and 147. Uh, are you going to be a full-fledged welterweight now, or could you still make 140? Because there are still some big fights down at 140. You know, what, what's the career path for the future? Yeah, well, uh, to be honest, you know, when I when whenever I get to camp, I um, mean, I'm like uh, playing probably like three weeks out of the fight. I always get around 45 ish, and I'm strong. So, you know, losing five pounds, it, it, it still hasn't been a problem for people. Like, well, when you get a little older, it's, it's actually hard for you to make weight, and then it's actually been okay with me, but. Um, you know, half of my career was at 47, and half was at 40. And I only actually moved down to 40 because I was offered the NABO title to fight um, Patrick Lopez. So that's what made me go down to 140. But actually, the half of my knockouts came at um, 147. Actually, as high as 154, I had fought Francisco Santana, which is another good fighter that I had beat. Um, I'm the only guy that stopped him. Um, um, but anyhow, uh, I fought him at as high as 54. That's because they offered the contract at that weight. And I fought at 52, he was at 54. But as going back to your question, whenever the opportunity comes, I can fight at 140 to 47, um, wherever the opportunity is.